Quite a while ago, I finished a cyberpunk corset based on a historical pattern. And not long after that, I finished some stretchy leather pants. But looking at the costume in its totality, it was still a bit bare. There was still something missing. Recently, I was browsing through my folder of tutorials that I have saved, because of course, everyone has a giant folder of saved tutorials, right? There was one that caught my eye. I had saved it quite a while ago, but never really had a good excuse to make it. Until now. So this cyberpunk costume is getting a neck corset. So for the pattern making part of this neck corset, I will be following Royal Black's tutorial. You can find the link in the description. And after that, after we've cut the fabric, I'm going with my classic technique of just winging it. So without further ado, let's get cyberpunking. Considering my old duct tape dummy didn't fit anymore, I once again asked my partner to tape me in, this time just my shoulders. Then I pinned the fabric part of the corset over this dummy so I could mark where the shoulders finished and the height of the keyhole neckline, as I want to try and see if I can make this neck piece end exactly at the start of the keyhole. After taking the fabric top off again, these big pattern pieces were then divided into smaller ones, by just eyeballing it. After tracing the pieces, we can take it off the dummy again and cut on the lines that we marked before. Then I transferred the tape pieces to the paper. In the end, all the pattern pieces should be able to lay flat on the table, so minor adjustments needed to be made. For how to do these exactly, I am going to refer you to Royal Black's tutorial, as she explains it wonderfully. I did make the front and the shoulder pieces on the shoulder seam a tad bit bigger to compensate for the fabric bulkiness. Then we can cut these pattern pieces from some sturdy mock-up fabric. Sewing the mock-up is as easy as sewing all the panels together and pinning the front and the back closed. And this is what the mock-up of the neck corset looks like. I'm wearing it over the actual corset that I'll be wearing it with, so we can check whether the length and everything is right. I just pinned the front closed by again aligning the two lines and putting pins through it without trying to stab myself in the neck. And honestly, I like it. I really, really like it. Of course, I can't really see the back yet, but I'll just check this footage for that. But the front I love. And from what I can see, I love the back as well. There's only one small thing and that has to do with the keyhole neckline that we've got here. The idea at first was to have the neck corset end up where the keyhole neckline begins, but that would be really high. And I kind of do want it to have a point in the front, so I might actually have it overlap a bit. There is also some room in the neck. This is quite comfortable. I mean, this is just one layer of fabric right now. And because the final thing will have more layers, the neck will also be tighter. So having plenty of room here right now is a very welcome thing. And that's pretty much it for fitting the mock-up. I'm happy. I don't need to make any adjustments to this, I think. There is, however, one more thing that we need to decide before we can actually start cutting this all out of fabric. And that's how we want to close it. The thing is, I kind of really want to have the corseted bit in the front, like uh, this kind of corset closure, but then in the front. The thing is, however, if I do that, I might not be able to get this really nice point in the front, which I kind of want. So that would mean that I would have the front closed. I can also just make this corset closure continue up into the neck. Downside to that is that so far I can put all of this on by myself. Uh, doing that will make sure that I cannot put this on by myself anymore. We don't want that. I can also put a closure in the shoulder seam, but I kind of don't want that because I really do want it to be split in half. So I might actually go for a third option that is put the corset closure in the front. However, stop right here. For that, I will have to check that if I can open all of this, can I get my head out or not? But that's really easy to check. So let's say that I'm going to put the corset closure all the way from up here to down here. Can I get it over my head is the question. The answer is I cannot. <laughs> so one more check. What happens if I lower it even further? Still not going to be able to. Okay, that's a bummer. But hey, this is the way that you figure out stuff like that. This is also fun stuff that you can do with your mock-ups. I guess I'll take this off and have a little think about how I actually want to do this closure. Then we can pin all of the pattern pieces on the fabric and cut them with one and a half centimeter seam allowance. After looking at the footage, I also decided to lengthen the neck. 
It might be slightly less comfortable, but I just love the look of high collars. If it doesn't work out, we can always lower it later, which is easier than adding on. I also decided to use an invisible zipper and make the corset closure decorative. For this, I don't need to alter the pattern, just add seam allowance of 1.5cm. Considering this pattern is already a difficult one to get on straight grain, and I also have to make do with whatever leftovers I have of the mesh from the corset, I'm kind of foregoing the whole straight on the grain part. I am going to sort of try and do it. At least for the front and back part, I am going to try and see if I can make a straight grain by aligning them with the squares of the mesh. And two of the side panels can fit on here without problem, sort of in the intended straight grain direction that they should be. Now, I have these two pieces left and this tiny bit of mesh. The only way that I'm going to fit them on here is by foregoing the straight grain idea. I'm going to put this one on here. This means that this one can sort of go on here. The only way that I can also make this fit is by shortening the seam allowance on this. Everything has a one and a half centimeter seam allowance by now, but I can shorten this to one centimeter and then it should actually fit on here. But I think changing straight grain for these pieces doesn't matter much anyway, considering the mesh is all sorts of squares and how curvy these seams are, they're gonna line up weirdly anyway. So it doesn't really matter. And this way, at least we can get mesh on every piece. Aside from that, we will be treating the mesh and the fabric as one layer anyway. So having slightly shorter seam allowances on the mesh shouldn't matter too much. Now that we've got this all lined up, time to cut it. After that, it is a case of just cutting around the fabric pieces as they already have the right amount of seam allowance. For the two pieces with less seam allowance, we take the pattern pieces off the fabric, put them on the mesh and cut them with 1cm seam allowance. And not to forget the added 1.5cm on top. Then we can finally start any construction. First, we place each mesh piece on the corresponding fabric piece and paste them together. After this, we will treat them as a single layer. Then, the first bit of sewing is to attach all of the pieces together, just like we did for the mock-up. First, each neighboring piece, and after that, the last two seams to create one half of the neck corset. After making both sides, it is time for another test fit, inside out, as the plastic edges are not nice against the skin. I am really happy with the way it looks, but with the height it currently has in the front, it does give me a bit of a double chin, so that will be lowered. The back height is fine as it is. It's also still loose enough to accommodate the seam finishes and everything. Then we have to open up the seam allowances to be able to finish them. For this, we can put our iron on low heat and press the seams open with a cloth. This took quite a while and is a pretty finicky task, but in the end the seams were opened and ready to be finished. After that, we removed the basting threads on the seams and cut the seam allowances short to about a centimeter. This is because I'm going to use tape of 2 cm wide to finish the inside seams and the seams will lay flatter if they are covered by more tape. After adding a few more pins, these were then all sewn on by hand from the inside, making sure not to catch the mesh layer on the outside, so the stitching will stay invisible. And on the inside, try to catch the seam allowances as well, so it will lay flatter and be more comfortable to wear. It has actually been quite a few weeks since I spoke to all of you guys about any decision making for this project. First of all, it took quite a while for all my supplies to actually get in, and secondly, I took a while to hand stitch this, as I did one seam a day. But now that all the seams on the inside are finished, we can actually start looking at how to continue this project. And the next step is to make the closures at the front and the back. I talked to you guys about this before. I think I'm going to end up with a corset closure, so crisscrossed laces, but actually make the functional closure be a zipper, so the laces are purely decorative. I really did try to find an invisible zipper that you could separate, but I couldn't find any. Or at least, not unless you had to buy at least one meter with only one zipper, so eh. So instead, I bought a regular separable zipper. Yes, it is very wide, and yes, the pull tab is very obvious. But considering this is a cyberpunk costume and it doesn't have to be all neat and dainty, I think this will actually fit. The biggest decision now, however, is do I want to put the zipper in the front or the back? Of course, it somehow makes sense to put the zipper in the back and to have the lace closure on the front. But then I can't really take it off and put it on by myself anymore, which was kind of a big point for me in this costume. So I might actually put the zipper in the front as well 
and then put decorative lace closure over it. The only thing I do have to keep in mind is that at the front, I really wanted to have it end in a point. So I do need to make sure that even though I insert the zipper, we still have it end in a point at the bottom. But I think that's pretty much it. And we can now just start inserting the zipper and the back closure because the back closure will then just be corded like normal. I'm not sure if I'm going to entirely close it yet or just have this corded so we can still adjust it slightly, but we'll see about that. Yeah, I think this might just work. So let's start inserting some closures. The zipper itself also adds some width. So I added it to the seam allowance and pinned 1.7 centimeters from the seam, after which it was folded over and the zipper pinned on. I always like to check the way it looks on the mannequin and I am really starting to like this. In this case, it was also a good way to see if the zipper added enough sturdiness to have it stand up without extra boning. Yeah, I like this. I really like this. This needs some work though, but that was as anticipated. Now that I'm wearing it though, I do see that the keyhole neckline, it ends up all the way here. So that would mean that the neck corset only comes down to here and that would make it really short. I think I actually prefer the longer neckline and it overlapping with the keyhole neckline a bit. I also really like the way that I pinned it right now. So having the zipper end up a bit above the points, this way you still get the illusion of the point and also slightly more of the gap of the keyhole. So I guess that this, especially this bottom part, can just stay as is with these measurements. I don't really know what the back looks like, as in I can turn my neck in this, but not a whole lot. So. I guess I'll have to see once I edit this footage. But yeah, other than that, it's actually relatively comfortable. I really like the fact that I lengthened the neck in the back and I think I'm going to keep it longer here, but I am going to shorten it a bit here in the front. That'll make it just that tad bit more comfortable. I also really need to finish these edges because this plastic is itchy as heck. So right now that means that I can start shortening the zipper, sewing it in, and then doing the eyelets definitely on the back and maybe on the front. I ended up taking one and a half centimeter off the front to nothing at the shoulder seam. When pinning the top edge, I did realize a wrong order of operations. Maybe I should have cut this bit off first and then finish the inner seams. Oh well, quick fix. Then the scary bit of cutting the zipper short. For this, we pin it in the way we want it to sit, ending two centimeters from the bottom edge. Then lower the zipper to where you want it to be when it is closed and cut between that and the top of the neck corset edge. I couldn't get the zipper stops off the original zipper ends, so I fashioned my own by grabbing a thick thread and wrapping it around the last zipper tooth a few times. Then the edges folded over so there won't be any plastic mesh poking out from underneath the zipper tape. This is stitched at about 3mm from the edge. After that, the zipper was attached, first to one edge, then the other making sure it was all lined up perfectly and opening and closing the zipper a few times to make sure it isn't pinned on too tight. Then another scary part. I hope I can get the stitch line of the zipper right on top of the previous stitch line. To sew this in, I'm using a zipper foot, although I do notice I need to stitch a millimeter further inwards to stitch right over the line. To check this, I'm mostly looking at how the stitch line goes under the foot, resulting in sewing like, well, like this. After both sides are stitched, the big question, will it close? And it does. And again, I'm already so happy with the way this looks. The last thing to do for the zipper is to stitch along the outer edge of the zipper tape so it lays flat. Then onto the back. The easiest way to finish this is to attach a piece of fabric and fold that over. For this, I cut a piece of four and a half by 25 centimeter. After cutting this, we can align it to the edge and stitch it at one and a half centimeter. It would end up very bulky if we keep all this seam allowance, so it is cut short after which the fabric flap can be ironed over. We do this by first pressing it open and then pressing it over in such a way that we don't see it peek out from underneath the mesh. This is then stitched very close to the edge, after which the other half is folded over. This way ends up slightly wider than 1.5cm on the back, but that's actually a good thing because that means we can pin it at 1.5cm from the edge and stitch it down like that. To finish the top and bottom edge, we cut strips of fabric on the bias. I decided to have it be 1.5cm of binding, so the total width of the strip we cut is 5cm. This is then turned into a bias strip by folding over the edges by 1cm with the help of a pin, and then iron double. This can then be pinned onto the outside of the neck corset at slightly less than 1.5cm from the edge, right on the fold line of the bias tape. 
and do leave some overhang at the edges. This is then folded over and the back is stitched on by hand, folding in the corners and stitching it closed. With this test fit, we're actually getting a glimpse of something that looks like the end result, and I really like it! At first, yeah, I had the idea to have the edges of the neck corset line up with the edges of the tank top, but as we still have seam allowance here, it's currently sticking out. And I'm not sure if I'm actually going to cut that off. The end idea is to have this piece of skin bare. I might wear gloves, but I'm not sure about that yet. And I think I actually really like the fact that it's sticking out. It sort of resembles shoulder armor and I like it. Which means that now we can just neaten these edges up and finish them just like we did the top. The construction is pretty similar as the top, except we break it up into three parts because of the corners. First the middle part. For this we don't leave an overhang and start right at the edge. After which we can do the other two parts. For this we do leave an overhang and finish the edges the same as earlier, by folding them inwards and stitching them closed. Then the last thing that has to be done to finish this is insert the eyelets. I opted to go with 7 eyelets for the back, which gave a wonderful 3.51cm of distance between each. After marking this with pins, we grab a 5mm hole punch to punch the holes, after which we can whack in the eyelets. Thread some core through it, and we're technically finished. But of course I have more plans for this, it is still a bit bare, so how about we add some chains that fall over the upper arms. It's easy enough to add them. I just guesstimated the length of each and confirmed that with a test fit. After which we can just sew these on at the corners. The process is pretty similar to sewing on a button. And now, I do think it is finished. I think I can summarize my thoughts in one word. Damn, I like it. It turned out pretty much as intended and I couldn't be happier. So much love for sleek garments like this. A massive thanks to Royal Black for making the tutorial that inspired this. And if you want to see more crafts like this, you can consider subscribing. With that, thank you all for watching and see you all next time.